Hello, my name is Wendy Myers. Welcome to the Myers Detox Podcast, where we explore all kinds of topics related to heavy metal detoxification, chemical detox, protocols and supplements, and biohacking techniques you can use to detox your body and dramatically improve your health. Toxic metals are one of the biggest contributors to fatigue. My name is Wendy Myers, and in my decade of research, I have discovered that toxic metals affect mitochondrial performance. Your mitochondria are little cells powerhouses that make your body's energy. And toxic metals like arsenic, aluminum, thallium, and cesium, those poison enzymes that produce energy in your body. These toxic metals are found in your air, food, and water. They're everywhere. They're unavoidable in our environment today. Everyone has them in their body. The question is what metals do you have and at what levels? Click the link below to take my quiz to evaluate your level of heavy metal toxicity. Today we have my friend, Dr. Eric Zielinski and his wife, Sabrina Zielinski on the show. They're also known as Dr. Z and Mama Z. And they have a wonderful website called naturalfamilyliving.com. And they have a new book out called The Essential Oils Diet. And we're going to be talking about all different kinds of things related to essential oils in food. You know, what are the bioactive rich foods and how do they relate to essential oils and a lot of great takeaways in the book about, you know, the biggest reason behind weight gain, essential oils you can use to stop cravings and food addiction and uh, a lot of different tips about, you know, do it yourself underarm deodorants and, you know, how to use essential oils and so many different takeaways and tips in this book. And it's also, uh, it's an amazing diet book. It's all about, uh, you know, what you can eat, not, you know, allowing yourself permission to eat uh, many foods that are considered forbidden in like the paleo or keto community, like uh, fruits and things like that because they have carbs in them. I personally don't uh, believe you should be removing fruits from your diet. I think they're incredibly healthy. And of course it depends on your health condition and, you know, other factors, but generally I think people should be eating fruit and Dr. Z believes so too. So today on the show, uh, Dr. Z is the author of the national bestseller, The Healing Power of Essential Oils, and the co-author of the upcoming book, The Essential Oils Diet. Dr. Z has pioneered natural living and biblical health education since 2003. Trained as an aromatherapist, public health researcher, and a chiropractor, Dr. Z started naturallivingfamily.com in 2014 with his wife, Sabrina Ann, to help people learn how to safely and effectively use natural remedies such as essential oils. Now visited by more than 5 million natural health seekers every year, naturallivingfamily.com has rapidly become the number one online source for biblical health and non-branded essential oil education. You can go to naturallivingfamily.com to learn more. Eric and Sabrina, thanks so much for coming on the show. Well, thank you. Yes, thank you. We love Wendy Myers. Yeah. <laughs> you got to be top one person in our favorite group list. I mean, really, um, you know, we we were part of a community of a lot of folks that do this stuff. And you are just you're such a sweet person, but you live the lifestyle mm-hmm. that you preach and I love everything you're about, Wendy. So I'm so grateful to be back on your show and introduce everyone to Mama Z, my better half, the prettier half. (laughs) (laughs) No, and the feeling is mutual. I love the work that you're doing and spreading the work about uh, the word about essential oils and how important they are to add to a health regimen and your already healthy lifestyle. And you and Sabrina do like so much good work spreading the word on alternative natural health. So you have a new book out called The Essential Oils Diet. And in that book, you you say that, you know, people are asking the wrong questions when it comes to weight loss. So tell us a little about that. You want me to begin this one, baby? Yeah, go oh ahead. man, you open up Pandora's box here. We are <laughs> fixated. We're obsessed with quantity, but not quality. Mm-hmm. Bottom line, we're n- obsessed with calories, carbs, fats, vitamins, and minerals. And we're looking at all these numbers. 
but we're totally throwing out the baby with the bathwater. And now the gluten-free industry are making billions of dollars selling the wor- worst crap food on the planet. Mm-hmm. And no one's looking at the ingredients. So we're That's trying right. to educate and bring back to pe- back to food freedom again, where we not look and don't be afraid of eating apples again. I, I It's okay. Healthy, <laughs> healthy fruits are okay. It's, <laughs> it, people are freaked out about watermelon and apples and high quote carb food fruits and things like where did that happen like how did we become brainwashed to be to like throw away whole groups of food that we've been living on since the beginning of time yeah the whole no fruit thing makes no sense at all it's like these are healthy foods you need to have in your diet natural detoxifiers right yeah how do you detox your life how do you how do you follow a toxic free lifestyle if you're consuming um none fruits and vegetables, right? So we're not vegan, we're not vegetarian, but we're very much plant-based friendly. And we just want to educate again, focused on the ingredients. But here's the missing link though too is, is and I know one reason why I was really happy um, to talk to you about this, Wendy, on this show is, is it's beyond proven. Like it's so bare bones science understanding now that the number one cause of metabolic burden is toxic overload. Mm-hmm. It's just it. Weight loss, weight gain, yes. cancer, autoimmunity, diabetes, all these different things that people are trying to accomplish, prevent, treat, has to do with toxicity. And we know beyond a shadow of a doubt that nothing can um, monopolize your metabolism than toxicity. And that includes the things that you're putting on your skin, the stuff that you're eating, what you're inhaling, whether or not you have aerosols and fresheners and all that stuff. So that's really what it is. You're, the people are asking the wrong questions about, it's all about numbers, instead of like, what am I introducing to my body and how do I really maximize my metabolism? Yeah, and stress is a huge factor also. Essential oils are so key in helping people to reduce stress and manage their cortisol levels so they can avoid belly fat, that so many people are, are overweight or have an extra 10 or 15 pounds just due to stress. How can essential oils help with that? Well, and I, I think, you know, it's important because we are li- living a life of detox and trying to yep. limit the, the toxicity that includes our relationships, yes. that includes um, the stress. And with the essential oils, you know, a lot of times people that have a lot of stress, I find that they have a h- hard time sleeping. And, and that can be a huge factor because, of course, if we don't have um, sleep, Mm -hmm. how do we act the next day? You know? And I think always, I always like to ask people, are you sleeping well? Do you, can you sleep, you know, well every night and usually introducing things like lavender, chamomile and vetiver. I love using those three together, not just in the diffuser, but also topically before Mm -hmm. bed or doing a detox bath with Epsom salts and Bragg apple cider vinegar. Um, and we use, um, lemon and lavender in the bath. Um, and the thing is, is that like, it sometimes is the stress of the day that you need to soak out, but sometimes it's the stress in the muscles too. And it gives you enough of a, a, a refreshing that you're able to go to bed and get a good night's rest and actually get such of a clear view of the day the next day. Mm. Yeah. I even track that on my aura ring. Well, I'll, the only time I get like the a really super deep sleep where I have improved deep sleep is with taking an Epsom salt bath with lavender in it. And it really? increases yes. my deep sleep. I've actually tracked that. <laughs> I'm a yes, nerd. It, <laughs> it's, um, it's amazing. And um, I'm one of my other girlfriends on her aura ring too. Um, cause she was getting the messages all the time, you know, that she was not at all to her optimum sleep and the detox bath is so key yes. and, and adding like, so we use six to eight drops of lavender and one to two drops of lemon, kind of mix it in with some olive oil and then put it in the bath with the Epsom salts and the bright apple cider vinegar. And what I found is it also helps to, you know, completely detoxify as well. And it's also exfoliating your skin cells. So that's going to be even better for our our outer bodies, especially for women. But the sleep factor is just the biggest key. And it's awesome. And proper sleep helps us to manage stress better. Mm-hmm. And that's a missing key to a lot of people's stress management mm-hmm. protocols is if you set yourself up for failure, you're going to fail. It's like mm-hmm. you got to set yourself up for success. And that means a good, healthy diet, well-balanced body care products, good sleep. But if you have a, if you really get to a point 
And th- I get it because I used to suffer from panic attacks. Like you could carry around a little aromatherapy inhaler that looks like a lipstick tube that's filled with, um, it's a cotton swab with essential oils. You can just breathe. You can just breathe in. It's on-the-go aromatherapy. And this is really nice because it's very respectful of other people. So you're not like spraying things in the subway or at your classroom or in your office. Mm-hmm. And having oils like bergamot, lime, neroli, orange, and lemon, specifically the citrus oils, can help stop a panic attack in its tracks. And also we know there's a direct connection between stress and depression. And it's cyclical. Stress can cause depression. Depression can cause stress. Well, the citrus oils are all antidepressants, and they've been shown to produce um, um, endorphins and dopamine and serotonin to give you just a happy, good, joyful feeling. It, it's a really key way, and it also puts a power back in your hands where you're not a victim of your circumstances like a lot of people feel like I used to feel like I was. Right. And, you know, one of the other things people don't think about is if they're, let's say they're on a journey to lose weight or they're on a a detox journey, their body is going to need more sleep. And, um, especially I know for me, um, training for Mrs. Georgia, um, when I'm in my, you know, like right now during my peak phase, um, I am sleeping more because I don't naturally require a lot of sleep because I get a lot of deep sleep when I sleep because I can go right to sleep and right into deep sleep. And I, I find that during the times of detox and during the times of my peak season, I require more sleep. I have to have it. Yes. Yeah. And it's so many people today are suffering from sleep issues for a lot of different reasons. But when I was having sleep issues, I definitely added essential oils to my regimen. And I also, for de-stressing, you know, I love this sweet orange. Um, I, I love smelling this when I'm podcasting. And, and I've got a lot of other a lot of other ones here too that I use. Yay! I just love essential oils so much. I have like a neroli that's one of my favorites. And they're yes. just, they're definitely part of my health regimen as well. That's- And it's great that you mentioned um, orange because when I was pregnant with my first, my mom had had terrible postpartum depression Yes, and it got worse with every subsequent baby. And so we prayed about like that. We didn't want to have that happen, but I, I started researching and I found that orange and vanilla essential oils mixed together. Um, were so powerful for so many different reasons, but especially postpartum depression. Mm -hmm. And so I came up with a topical blend for the babies. But what I found is in putting it on them, I was getting all of the inhalation benefits. And not only have I always been told, oh, you have the happiest babies, they're smiling all the time. But I never had any postpartum depression or any of that utilizing the essential oils on the kids. Yeah, so there's so many different uses for essential oils. So let's talk a little bit about how essential oils help people to get past the bad habits and the traps that they know are preventing them from living their best lives. You have so many different tips in your book. Yeah, you know, it really all, to me, when the one thing I've found is that people that um, are doing things that are harmful and they know, and, I, and I'm going to make a judgment call against smokers because I'm a recovering smoker. So I think I could say this. No one smoking right now on a regular basis um, who knows? Again, there's a level of ignorance. Some people don't really know, right? But if you know that smoking can cause cancer, and if you're a regular smoker, I'll guarantee there's a level of self-hatred in your life. And there's a level of depression. And to overcome that, you really have to fall in love with yourself, right? And so anything to make you feel better is very therapeutic, which could help And that's where essential oils, again, Mm -hmm. mood boosting, everything from dealing with nausea, dealing with libido, dealing with hormonal issues, but to help people really feel better again, to love themselves again, but more importantly, feel like they're worth it. And Mm -hmm. and to have something that is almost instant, you know, it, it takes a while for some of the other things that we do, like nutrition and exercise and some of the, you know, maybe exercise, you get a quick endorphin rush. But essential oils are instant. They, they literally penetrate your bloodstream within minutes. When you inhale them, you instantly get the effect throughout your whole body. And so we're trying to help people, and it can get a little deep, but we're trying to help people really fall in love with themselves again and know that they're worth it. And, right. and it's you need and we need to do the things that cause us to feel better because it is our unalienable right to feel good and joyful and be happy. And if we're not 
then we're not going to be able to fulfill the potential that yeah. we're supposed to have and, and what, why we are here on the earth. Because if we're stuck over here just trying to get through each and every day, then we're not living on for what we're supposed to be here for. And each of us are called for a purpose. Yeah. And, you know, my dad smoked for 40 years and you just, you see that they're just not loving themselves and almost saying, I hate myself. I hate myself. Every time they're taking a drag of that, because there's so many health issues. And when you're coming, you know, stopping smoking and coming off of that, you need every tool uh, that you can use to, you know, make yourself feel better and lift your mood. And, you know, people are smoking because they're trying to get a dopamine hit, essentially. They're trying to increase their dopamine and essential oils can help to improve your neurotransmitters so you feel better and can stop doing that. You have a replacement for that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And that's really, that's, that's been the mission. That's been the mission of our work, you know, coming from myself, dealing with clinical depression and suicidal thoughts. Like I remember, I remember falling to drug abuse. I remember smoking on a regular basis and doing cocaine and thinking, I don't care what this does to me. I just want to feel good for a minute. And knowing, like, I know this is bad for me. And I, that was my rock bottom when you almost don't care. It's almost like a form of suicide, slow suicide. And so, you know, what we want to do is help you feel and get addicted to feeling good again and looking at our kids and you have a beautiful young daughter, like you see her vivacious desire, her lust for life. Like she only wants to feel good and be happy and play. And like, where did we lose that along the way? And, you know, I'm 39, Sabrina's 40. And, you know, we have more of a lust for life than I can remember. And, and you know, I'm not saying that orange oil cured me of everything, but it helps. It really does. Like we're diffusing bergamot and lime. It really, these are very energetic, yeah. happy, producing, like, you know, hunger, craving, curbing kind of oils too. Like there's a lot you could do when it comes to symptoms and addiction, you mentioned, we mentioned, we talk about smoking and quitting smoking. Black pepper is fantastic. It's been yes. shown to actually stop the addiction cascade and to help people overcome the withdrawals of addiction. And most people proven are addicted to sugar, which we know is more addictive than cocaine. Right. So to help people get off the sugar habit, that's where essential oils can really help curb those cravings like peppermint, cinnamon bark, grapefruit, and lime. Those are our four core oils that we talk about in the essential oils diet. So just having those things at your disposal in conjunction with good nutrition, exercise, mind, body, prayer, meditation. And one thing we talk a lot about in the book are keys to the abundant life, like yes. emotional detoxing, you know, like essential oils can actually help you get to a more of a meditative state, clear away some brain fog, like that might help you deal with some forgiveness, maybe some bitterness issues, some help you do some emotional recall healing. Like there's some really cool techniques that people can utilize with letting go. And like we say, letting go and letting God, like kind of like getting things off of our balance sheet and putting it on the divine. And you know, that's wonderful when you don't have to carry that burden on your right. shoulders. And that's part of it. It's It's all part of this holistic lifestyle that We've been very blessed to live now for about 15 years. And so, yes. and I know you have too. Yes, I know. I love that you say that you want to get addicted to feeling good because I really feel that I really identify with that where you just want to do things that make you feel good all the time. You know, that's just how, our, how we are as humans is pleasure seeking. So do something good rather than something bad, you know, the short term. So, so in your book, you talk about, you know, a, a slow metabolism is not a scapegoat. Um, can you talk a little about that? Yeah, you know, the thing about metabolism is metabolism's got a bad rap uh, for a lot of things, um, it, really. And I, I don't know where it came about. And I want to find out mm -hmm. the solution because, or I want to find out where it started. But our understanding of the metabolism has been um, very much um, distorted by people saying things like, I have a slow metabolism, I have a fast metabolism, let's speed it up or whatever. You know what metabolism is? Metabolism, like by definition, is are the some chemical processes that are required to keep you alive. It's the energy. It's we're talking cellular level, like mm -hmm. mitochondrial function, like biology, ninth grade stuff that we, you know, rem remember the ribosomes, the things that we had to do in charts, ninth grade. That's <laughs> metabolism. Like, so the thing about it is, if your metabolism again is the energy required for you to maintain life. What's pumping your heart, the energy required to keep you breathing and have your cells regenerate themselves? There's only so much energy that our body can utilize and maintain. And if our energy is being monopolized by toxic burden, 
by inhaling toxic substances, putting toxic chemicals on her skin through skincare, um, eating toxic foods, right? Pesticide written genetically modified foods. Our metabolism becomes burdened, actually becomes burdened with keeping us alive, basically ridding our body of the, of, of the toxins. And what's happening is instead of burning fat, instead of maintaining healthy weight, the, the body can't even focus on that because there's only so much that it could do. And we know even the Mayo Clinic has gone on record saying that met metabolic function, like there's no such thing as a slow metabolism that mm -hmm. make people gain weight. It's like a misnomer. And it's become a crutch for a lot of people like, oh, I have a slow metabolism. I have a sluggish thyroid. And, they, and it becomes like the onus gets out of us and it's like on mm -hmm. something else that we can control where we start to remember like maybe the thyroid isn't functioning properly because of X, Y, and Z. Maybe your metabolism isn't functioning properly because of mm -hmm you name it, right? So that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to get people back to just, again, living this toxic-free lifestyle and feeding the body with the healthy things that produce proper weight management. And it's not complicated. It really isn't. You get down to it. No. Are, are there any essential oils that are really known for helping with, you know, you know, improving your metabolism or maintaining a healthy metabolism? You know, when it comes to metabolic function, the key are bioactive compounds. And most people, it kind of surprises me, you know, researchers have been talking about bioactive compounds for well over 100 years. They name them carotenoids, polyphenols, um, plant-based chemicals that are rich in antioxidants, also essential oils. So the things that are in our plants that give us robust health, and these are the ones that help fight off the free radicals and keep us healthy. So when it comes to essential oils, they're part of a subgroup of food or a subgroup of, of food-based particles, plant-based compounds that help us enhance metabolic function, which essentially all goes back to ridding our body of toxins, aka free radicals, mm -hmm. and having antioxidant-rich stuff. And so all essential oils can benefit in that sense. So what we've done is we've tried to really um, – I guess distill down the ones that are most cost effective because some are super expensive. Right. Like, you know, we love rose, but I mean, you know, not many people can afford a two, $300 bottle of rose because it takes a lot of roses just to get an itty bitty mm -hmm. bottle. So we want to help people get back on the ones that can, you know, again, cost efficient. And that's orange oil, lime and grapefruit. Um, peppermint is a great one for hunger, cravings and energy. Cinnamon bark balances blood sugar and also helps with cravings. Um, and these citrus ones, too, have been shown to actually burn fat. It produces what's known as lipolysis. Once you breathe citrus oils, the brain will start to trigger um, neurotransmitters that say, hey, start to burn fat. And Ooh, we've seen I'm, I'm going to smell some of that right now. Literally, <laughs> literally. It, it's, it's profound. It's not like you're going to lose 20 pounds by smelling, but if you incorporate them in inhalation, but also Mama Z's got a recipe she could share yes. our fat burning roll on applying because they oxygenate the body, they oxygenate the fat, the body starts um, burning fat naturally. Like you could wrap your tummy or your underarms if there are certain problem areas, like she gets ready for her pageants. Right. So much. And I utilize um, with the skin. So um, these oils that he mentioned, you know, the, the peppermints and the um, the cinnamon bark mm -hmm. and the citrus oils. Um, I actually incorporate these same oils into my shower gel that I make. Mm -hmm. And, you know, for people who don't have time to DIY, they can easily go get an unscented, like Dr. Bronner's um, Castile soap or another one that's healthy and put these essential oils in them. And then I like to use the detox gloves in the shower. And I, I literally wear my little gloves um, and I, I put it on my skin and then I use, it's a fat massager, but it's it's so good for, for detox. And I get right into those yeah. areas, you know, for people, a lot of people it's, you know, it's gonna be their flanks or their tummy or their thighs or their buns and really get that skin engaged, especially if they have a lot of weight to lose. And because a lot of that skin has really been stagnant and and for people who have over 100 pounds of weight to lose they really need to get their skin engaged and have that because it is our largest organ and we do need to detox that properly and utilizing essential oils really makes that possible in a way that we can do so easily in the shower and using those same oils out of the shower in a in a roll-on or a body lotion or i mean a body oil that way we can continue to have that kind of myofascia release but use 
the oils that are going to help it do the detox that it needs to do. Yeah. And that really gets the lymph flowing too, whether you're rubbing yes. it on in the shower yes. or doing a self massage or another person massaging you that getting that lymph flowing, that's how the, the toxins are carried out of the body is so important. And it's a big bottleneck for so many people. Absolutely. Absolutely. Do, do you want to give them the roll on? Yes. Yeah, so, this is right um, from the book. This it is says, right from our book. This works folks. Yes. Pounds will just fly away. No, they'll, they'll help. It really will. Like we found that these kinds of techniques help people that are plateaued and that someone needs a little extra boost, but you're going right. to love it. So it's four drops of lime, three drops of peppermint, mm -hmm. three drops of grapefruit, two drops of cypress, one drop of eucalyptus, one drop of cinnamon bark essential oils. And you're going to put that in a 10 milliliter glass roll on bottle and then fill the rest of the way up with fractionated coconut oil or jojoba oil. And, um, and basically I also use it. Um, I use that same combination. I actually multiply those doses by more and I make a little blend and then you can actually use that same blend um, in any carrier, like six to eight, uh, um, six to eight drops for every one ounce, if you want to use it as a body oil and then using the roll on, on those specific areas and really like the little fat massagers or whatever, they had little, have little knobs, sometimes wooden and, um, and using those or like a fascia blaster, something that is more, you really can really invigorate that skin. i I mean, you'll see awesome results. And, you know, closer to Mrs. Georgia, um, in the next couple of weeks here, I'll start doing my, um, where I actually take and, and roll that onto the skin. I use a muslin wrap and then I wrap it in Saran. And when you wake up in the morning, this, you are sweating a ton, but you wrap each individual area. Um, and then you'll get that extra, um, tightening and toning effect for like an overnight experience. Hmm. I have to try that. <laughs> Works. Awesome. It works, but don't. Here's the thing, though. Don't yeah. wrap yourself in one piece because yes, I so. wrapped her up like a mummy. Literally. So the very first time, I was like, I had come up with this awesome recipe, and I loved it. Put it on my body, and then I had him wrap my leg, and my other leg, and my tummy, and then my arm, and then my and then my tummy again, and my other arm, and then I had to go to the bathroom in the middle of the night. <laughs> you had to be cut out of your suit. I had to cut myself out, you know. And I was like, okay, mental note: only individual body parts. But what, what I found is you find like the side, you, you buy, I'm buy the muslin, uh, just uh, organic muslin on Amazon. And then like, I have a certain size that I, I pre-cut for my arms and for my legs. So then I just have like, it's so easy. I make it so easy so I can just go, okay, there's an, I have them all pre-cut in little bags that say arms, legs, tummy. So then it's all set to go. So then when I'm going to do it, then it's not like, Oh, I've got to do the whole process. This is going to take an hour, <laughs> you know. It's easy, fast, and you can just sleep overnight, burn extra calories, tighten and tone, and it's a win-win. Yeah, and oh, what we do for beauty. What us ladies do, <laughs> gosh. <laughs> but hey, it's great for weddings and beach body. And of course, if you're like Sabrina competing for yeah. Mrs. Georgia pageant. <laughs> I'm not doing that, by the way. But yeah. I will oh, actually do is, a little. I will is, do. He's like, he's training. Yeah, I'm training know, now. But what I'll do is Georgia. I'll do my little fat burning roll on over my little tummy because I'm 39 in. And I got a little 39-year-old tire around me that I'm getting rid of. <laughs> and, and, and we're talking small tire, okay? Yeah, it's all right. But still. It's like a bike tire. It's still. I've been focused. I've been researching essential oils too much. I got to get back at the gym. So I got a personal trainer, a good friend of mine. That's the other thing too, folks. You can't do this alone. Mm -hmm. Like get the support you need and and whatever. Even if it's like we have an infrared sauna in our home. Like you have an infrared sauna buddy. Like well, one of your friends said, hey, can we have a girls night? Yeah, like, yeah. I said, I have I have an infrared sauna with chromotherapy. She's like, oh, you have red light therapy? I said, well, I have all of the spectrums of the colors <laughs> as well. So like we a little can disco do, party in there. Yeah. Yes, we can <laughs> like go red night. an hour, green, blue. We can go full spectrum. Yeah, She's fun. like, let's have a, a girls' night for sure. <laughs> Yeah. And you have to really, you know, you know, it's, it's, you know, nourish yourself from the inside out, you know, to be beautiful, to be healthy, to have glowing skin and a healthy look in your eye. You have to eat these bioactive rich foods and nourish yourself from the inside out. Can you tell us about some more about the bioactive foods, maybe some of the recipes that you have in the book? Yeah. You know, at the core what we what we try to share is ultimately food freedom. I know we've joked a little about watermelons and apples, but they're okay. I mean, 
you know, eating an apple isn't going to kill you. It's not going to cause you to gain weight. Now, if you, all you do is eat apples and all you do is eat carbs, well, that's a different story. So our, our bioactive approach is we go back to some of the most healthy, well-balanced foods. You know, your almonds, your walnuts, your avocados, but, you know, again, your berries, but your fruits. You know, potatoes, sweet potatoes are pretty good for you. Grass-fed beef and wild-caught game, we try to caution people against because right now it's very, very hard to get clean meat. It's just, it's, yes. even though your meat might be organic, it says, and grass-fed, what are they spraying the grass mm-hmm. with? And we see residues of glyphos- a residue of glyphosate in all meat products now. So we're tr- we actually tell people, hey, take a month off from eating meat. See how your body responds. Mm-hmm. Have some wild-caught fish, if you can get your hands on some good, real wild-caught fish. But again, a lot of good, healthy stuff. You know, your quinoa's. Your, your your ancient grains, your brown rice, like in moderation, we don't want to again go back to eating grains and breads every single meal. Right. But, you know, it's it's food in its whole form. I mean, there's no vegetable and no fruit that we say is bad for you. And now here's the one thing, you got to be in tune with your body. Like if your body is nightshade sensitive, like Sabrina's is, well, don't eat them. How do you know? Well, Kind of do a food journal, like eat something. And then if you don't feel good, make a note, what did I eat? And then next time, okay, do I feel this way? Mm -hmm. But really at the end of the day, you have to find your own approach. And we kind of walk people through signs and symptoms. Um, One thing though, regardless of what you eat, and I actually learned this the hard way. I, we have a podcast, Wendy, and this last week I talked about my fat pants story. (laughs) Uh, And I I had to gain, I I gained a couple inches on my tummy. And I remember about six, seven years ago, I was just so humbled. I went to the dry cleaner. That's a whole other story. He totally went to a dry cleaner we don't even go to. No, I was embarrassed. Had his pants altered and then had me pick him up. I was embarrassed. (laughs) It it was embarrassing. I was in chiropractic school. But the thing was, I didn't like go eat fast food and junk. I just ate a lot of food and the foods that, you know, mom disease, gluten-free, sugar-free, naturally sweetened cookies, I would have maybe five and six instead of just one. Like I got out of moderation Mm -hmm. and food actually became a crutch for me. It helped me deal with stress of school and stuff. And I, I gotta say that's real for a lot of people, myself included. Um, but you know, in, in that story, we're telling people about this, you know, what you can do when it comes to food is you can create a balance that works for you in a very sweet way that it's completely different for you than it might be for somebody else. Right. And, and we walk people through that and, and little tips and little tricks along the way. And one thing I learned in my fat pants story was I was eating till I was full. Yes. And so one thing I learned, and this is part of the blue zone theory, most blue zoners, they even, um, I forget the name of it. I don't speak Japanese, but the Okinawans, they have a name um, as a blue zone and they've done so much studies right on them of, of when to stop eating when you're like 75% full. There's like a, a, a name for that. It's a tradition. So we talk in the book signs and symptoms of when you're eating too much because I actually was eating good food, but just too much of it. And so now I've trained myself to stop eating around 75, 80% full. And no, I don't have like a measuring spoon to tell how where I'm at, but there's certain things like when you feel distended, when you, when you actually, when food stops tasting really, really good, that's a sign that that's enough because yeah. your last bite of cake shouldn't and normally it doesn't taste as good as the first body cake because you're you're satiated your body's like enough well speak so for st- yourself because i think the last <laughs> bite of cake is still tasting pretty good to me <laughs> well. well and also you know one of, one of um one of the research journals that i read said that you're once you like really get in tune with your body that when you're actually full like you'll you'll have like a little burp that will come up. Mm. And if you're really keen and aware of when that happens, then that at that moment you stop. And so because we don't waste anything at our house, like we literally like, I, we have no problem with putting something in the refrigerator just like it is like that. And then, you know, having it for lunch the next day because it's still going to be there and it's still going to taste as great. But, you know, even a salad, like, you know, if, if I don't finish it, I'll finish it the next day. And I have no problem with that. Yeah. No, no clean plate club. And that's something yeah, that and, and we were, ra- I was raised yes. on the clean plate club. That's I mean, the hardest thing. I that's mean, the thing we did all but lick that plate. And I will tell you, <laughs> like, we just, we don't do that. And it's kind yeah. of funny because like I would hide my food in the coupon drawer because I sat next to the coupon drawer. 
And I knew I wouldn't get in trouble until my mom and dad went shopping. And usually, you know, I'd have a couple weeks to spare. But I f- found myself hiding the food in there because I wanted to have that that clean plate club. And the thing is, is that when we're done, we're done. And of our kids, we'll have one kid that, you know, will be like, oh, I'm not as hungry today. And the next one is, I am, you know, and, and they'll like, I'll finish your yeah, plate. Yeah, it's easy with kids. It's so easy <laughs> because like they barely ever have leftovers. leftovers. <laughs> I mean, like they just, between the two of them, they're like, and if there is leftovers, I think it's an awesome thing because yes. they're like, you know, my son, um, our oldest son, he is like, he loves if there is a leftover on a plate because he's going through a growth spurt, spurt right now. And yesterday he said, mom, I ate all of this, all of that and all of that. But guess what? I am a growing boy and I am still hungry. <laughs> he said, do you have any of that um, vegetable lasagna in there? That special stuff you make? Cause we, you know, make it all allergy friendly and all of that. And, um, and he, I said, I do. And he goes, wait, I mean, the stuff that I had like a couple days ago, that was really good. Yep. And he just, he cleaned it right up. (laughs) I was like, wow. So, you know, when you have good things and you're able to recognize your body signs, you're able to, you know, say no more and, um, and teach the kids that it's okay not to have a clean plate because, you know, it's, that's how it it needs to be. If your body's full, you're full. I learned that from the kids. I mean, the baby, babies will say I'm enough enough. They'll throw it on the floor. All I, done. I was I was actually shocked at myself seeing our babies say no to food, even if it was their favorite treat. And I was like, that's interesting because you don't see that in adults. Adults don't have that litmus test anymore. And so I started thinking back. I'm like, okay, how do I retrain myself? Having kids, Wendy, has been the best thing for my health. I'm telling you, for my life in so many areas, like they are really, really good at a lot of things and healthy. Their instincts, like yeah. intuition. And so I'm really trying to tap into that and help people get back to those just vibrancy and lust for life and health and all the things that our kids have enjoyed. And I also don't want to beat it out of them. I don't want to, mm. you know, verbally or physically or any other way force that, right? That's kind of a form of physical abuse. Eat that now. Like, I'm not, we're not. I remember hiding food behind the couch once <laughs> because my dad and mom would say, okay, well, if you don't eat it for this meal, then you're eating it for a snack and the next meal and the next meal until it's gone, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and so, you know, we're not, you know, we're not doing that. No. And I mean, we're not going to, and, and, but don't get me wrong. If we have a child that's like refusing to eat good things or, you know, other stuff like that, we'll, we'll have to do a little bit of a standoff sometimes. And For we now. have, but you know, we don't do it like on a school day or anything like that. No, you're not going to school with any food, but you know, um, our one son, he didn't want to eat any vegetables for a while. And we were like, no, enough is enough. No, you're, you're going to have that when you finish your vegetables and you get other things. Well, I'm not a dinner guy then. And, um, I'm, I'm like, okay, well then, you know, if you don't eat those vegetables for a couple of days, I think you're going to realize that you are more of a vegetable guy than you. <laughs> They're going to taste real good. <laughs> real good. They're going to be breakfast. For real you. good. Breakfast. And so like, he's the first one to say. Now I finished all my vegetables. Yeah, he's like, no, he's I did. I did really good, you know? And so, you know, we'll have to do some of those things um, in a healthy way, um, but definitely not to lick that plate clean. Yeah. And I have a rule I institute with my daughter. I have to have a vegetable or fruit at every single meal. And my daughter has that same rule. Also, she knows the rule. You're going to eat this. This is what we're having for this meal. And she can start with that first if she doesn't want to finish the whole plate. Uh, But yeah, it's and I have a good. My adult plates are a three-quarter size. I actually have smaller plates that can help me do portion control rather than a big, gigantic plate that you feel kind of compulsed to fill up. Um, But but yeah, you really have to get in touch with that. It's, you know, listening to your own body and when you're full or skipping a meal if your body isn't hungry. I think so many people wake up, they're not hungry. Their body's telling them not to eat for whatever reason. Their liver's still detoxing or doing something and... There, it's breakfast time, so it's just time to eat. So I think people really have to get in tune with their body, like you said, really you know, re-engage with their body and pay attention to it. Um, so let's talk about cravings, because a lot of people are, are overeating or on a blood sugar roller coaster that's making them you know, want to eat more food or eating for emotional comfort. Can you talk a little bit about how to use essential oils to you know, uh, deal with cravings? 
Yeah, our our healthy craving blend is equal mixtures of peppermint, cinnamon bark, and lime and grapefruit. And you know, the cinnamon bark again balances the blood sugar. The peppermint actually gives you a nice boost of energy, but it can actually help um, reduce those cravings too. One thing that we forget about are the the hormones leptin and ghrelin. Like these are the hormones that make you feel full or give you more of a, um, a craving for food. And ghrelin is what gives you the cravings for um, unhealthy foods, like they call it like in, in our um, endocrinology class, like gremlin, remember it as ghrelin as a gremlin. Remember the gremlins from the 80s, those little whatever dinosaur monster thing movie. You ever see the gremlins? Yeah, they, they, used to, yeah they used to eat snacks and bad foods. So, you know, to eat foods that could help balance those. And that's why we incorporate um, a lot of diffusion. And mm -hmm. for people that are really, really struggling you can put some essential oils in a little shot glass or a jigger glass or a little cup with some olive oil and you could put some toothpicks, some wooden toothpicks in there and you let the toothpicks, the wooden toothpicks suck up the oil and the essential oils. And a lot of people, they have an oral fixation. They always have to have something eating. And, and like, I'm so glad you mentioned about not having breakfast because we've also, right. as a culture, been obsessed with this, always have to eat, always have to snack. Like my mom, she has to have a meal every hour. Like why? You know, give your body a break and let your body detox, right? So for people that have that addiction, and it's also just okay. why? You know, core, in, in the core of who you are, what's drawing you to these things? You'll find that that those happy essential oils, like the citrus oils, can really just replace those just desire for unhealthy things and whatever it might be there's all kinds of little hacks we like our sparkling water you add a few drops of stevia to it with a drop of lime or grapefruit that's a great little replacement for soda cop um soda pop that could satiate you make you feel full gives you just makes you feel happy um you'll find that you don't really need to eat as much as you normally do but yeah to stop that in its tracks and sometimes it just takes full-fledged self-control I mean, sometimes at the end of the day, it's like, no, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going right. to eat that. And those are some of the most empowering moments for anybody, right. which is why we always like to encourage true fasting, like eat your dinner at, at like seven o'clock and don't eat again for at least 12 to 15 hours, like force yourself not to at times and even go a whole day water fast. Like that's right. a great discipline. Yeah. And I actually was able to get off of, I had gotten off one of the prescription drugs before then, but I was on 10 prescription drugs. Oh, wow. And, um, How old were you? Like what, 24, 23? Yeah. 20, 24, 25. Yeah. And I, um, I really felt called to do water fast. And, um, and my pastor had talked about the dynamics of fasting from Isaiah 58 and all the benefits that go with that. And I didn't, I didn't know it was going to be 10 days, but I ended up, um, it was 10 days and like my body in the process of detoxing, I remember seeing black stuff coming like out of my pores in the third or fourth day and just the release. And in that, in that time, I also, you know, made right relationships, you know, that had been broken and other stuff like that. But I got a full emotional and physical detox from that and, you know, we still do regular detoxes, you know, in our house, we do the liver gallbladder cleanse. We do lots of different things to always be detoxing. But, um, at that time that really was the start to, um, uh, the whole body approach of a life of detox for me. And that's such a, a more fun way to, to do a water fast is water fasting with essential oils in the water. At least give you a little bit of flavor and a little added benefit as well. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's, you know, just, I don't know, you're, you're never alone. And maybe essential oils can be your buddy. I mean, really, at the end of the day, you always have something at your side. They could be your friend. Mm -hmm. You know, bergamot and lime are my best friends right now as I go through somewhat of a stressful time, you know, getting ready for another book and, you know, all kinds of fun little travel and, and stuff and all this stuff. It's like, you know, what? I, I got my go to. It's like I, I have a good, healthy um I don't want to call it a fixation, but having something that you know that is really good and life giving to you, always by your side, it's kind of nice. It's somewhat comforting, you know. I never yeah. thought of essential oils as my friends before, but yeah, like I always, <laughs> I have you, and I, I have, have you. Yeah, you're okay at times, but it's like <laughs> essential oils—they never argue back at me. I mean, <laughs> I don't talk they back. Never tell me. 
They never tell me. I'm definitely me. not a yes man. That's they, for sure. they, they never tell me to take out the garbage. I'm the perfect friend. No. <laughs> and, you know, for me, like, and everybody has their own um, comforting essential oils. Yeah. I, I love the citruses blended with, um, uh, you know, the vanillas yes. and the peppermints and, you know, depending on the day, sometimes ylang lang and just, um, those together are very comforting. And then, you know, at different times of the day, we need different things. So, you know, when we're doing more of a focus or, um, waking up at five o'clock in the morning or, or four o'clock in the morning to work out, um, I love using peppermint and eucalyptus and rosemary together. Just that like, performance boosting, um, get you going kind of blend. Like I know if we are packing for a trip, those are the oils going in the diffuser that day. Cause I need everybody to get her done that day. <laughs> <laughs> and it works, it works. And it's so funny because, um, you know, our, my helpers that are here that help us, um, they, they'll be like, wow, what's that in the diffuser? It smells really good. And different people will, you know, will comment on different things in the household. Like, you know, the days I'll have the focus blend, the people that need to focus be like, oh, I really like what's in that diffuser over there. And the people that need to get her done. I mean, it's, it's so cool how our body just intuitively knows what we need at the times that we need it and how over time that will change. And that that's cool because our body is evolving and, um, you know, the way that we are healthy is always evolving. So, um, being in tune with the, the oils that, you know, bring us comfort or the ones that we like, we obviously like them for one reason or another. Yeah. I mean, I use them on an almost daily basis. I love essential oils and I'm dealing right now with a lot of cravings and I don't know what's going on with me with stress or just have a lot going on and, you know, you know, packing for a trip that I'm leaving on Thursday, I'm going to Cuba. And so I use essential oils to help me to kind of reduce stress. I started to feel a craving coming on and I'll, you know, you know, smell one of my essential oils, do some diffusing and drink a big glass of water. Also, it seems it really, really helps to cut those cravings. Um, so can you talk a little bit about like anything else you want us to know about your new book, The Essential Oils Diet and, you know, any other takeaways that people can expect from the book? Yeah, one of the great things, and this is what I found over time, is especially um, going through a process, a lifestyle process of really trying to, you know, detox and change habits and, you know, living healthier, um, you need support. Yes. And it's it's so crucial. And so what we've done is, um, is created a group for the people that are going to, you know, buy our book, they get all kinds of freebies and fun stuff. But the coolest thing is our 60 day, um, challenge. And for our challengers, we've created an environment that we already kind of know what they're going through throughout this 60 day period. And so not tackling everything all at once, but hitting all of these low hanging fruit and providing support. And then the support that they have amongst each other in the group. Um, we've done test trials with this and, um, people have literally not only gained friendships and other stuff like that, but not had to feel like I'm all alone in my house doing this or that. Or even if my spouse doesn't support me on this, ha they have won their spouses over by their lifestyle and what they've done and the, the results that they've had, the happier the people are. And just seeing people thrive within the community of people that have each other and have us to support them. And then they can utilize the recipes and the things in our book to be able to support their lifestyle. Yeah, yeah, that's wonderful. It's so important to have a supportive community around because some people they don't get support from their partner who's not as interested in health as they are. And we have to lead by example. That's right. And, you know, a key takeaway from the book and why it was 60 days is research has shown and, and it shocked me, actually, because I've seen for years people say three weeks, 21 days takes to form a habit. That's a lie. That's like 100% not proven. And what has been proven is this is thousands and thousands of people have been evaluated on these trials. On average, it takes 66 days. So you got to think of it. And it makes kind of sense. You know, our bodies on monthly cycles and, you know, to think that your whole world is going to change in th three weeks doesn't even make sense to me logically. Mm -hmm. But so here's what we we're encouraging people is, you know, most diseases, autoimmunity, 
cancer, diabetes, um, obesity. The, these are lifestyle diseases for a long, for, for the most part, that takes years to develop. So give yourself some time. Be patient with yourself. Do the behaviors that you know are right. And I'm just saying, give yourself two months, but don't look back. And that's the key is we're, we're trying to help people understand and believe in themselves that they can create a lifestyle that's very life-giving, that's very satisfying, that, that will never tempt you to go back into the things that you know caused you to get in trouble in a number of ways and to look forward with the her beautiful sunset horizon in front of you because that's really what life should be like. So it doesn't matter how old you are. And the, the people that we worked with have been as old as in their 70s to as young as teenagers. And it doesn't matter. Your body will respond in proper time. You just got to be patient with yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and eating foods rich in bioactive compounds and using essential oils are some of the simplest things that you can do to improve your health. And once you kind of get that taste of living a healthier lifestyle, you just want more more and more and more and more. And one of the cool things too, is that you don't realize once you've obtained, um, you know, awesome health like that, how much you appreciate it, you know, when you get into an environment yes. that compromises it, Yes. when you're in the bathroom and one of their air fresheners just psh, psh, sprays over you and you're not feeling as good and, and stuff like that. So, you know, once you have obtained, um, you know, just an optimal health, always trying to push forward and add something new yes. or change something and be evolving with it because your body is going to continue evolving, whether you make changes or not. And we want them to be good changes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And, and also the perfume, yeah, you mentioned perfume and air fresheners. I mean, these are like secondhand smoke almost. Oh, it's so horrible. Yes. I mean, our skin is our largest organ. We have to be so conscious um, especially nowadays of what we're putting on it so that we can or cannot um, be in a state of detox. Or if we're going to be actually just detoxing from what we're putting on our skin, mm -hmm. I'd much rather be detoxing from the things I can't control than the things I can. Yeah, it's so much nicer to use essential oils for, for fragrance or perfume putting on your body. I use a Hawaiian jasmine called Kokei, Ooh. and it's unbelievable. It's amazing. And I, I just used to spray this perfume and these horrible perfumes I got at the department store. I thought I was just, you know, it's very luxurious and, and whatnot. But you, the smells now are just horrible. I can't stand that part of the department store because they're toxic, petroleum-based. Yes. Yeah. Totally. So, so many uses for essential oils. So thanks for enlightening us today on all the various uses of essential oils. There's so many out there. It's just you have so many amazing tips on your website and in your book. Highly, highly recommend everyone, you know, learn more about essential oils and start incorporating these tips you can get from Dr. Z and Mama Z on their website. So tell us where we can find you in your book, The Essential Oils Diet. Oh, yeah. Um, to get plugged in with the book, you go to EssentialOilsDiet.com. And like Sabrina said, we have a really cool gift package for you with more than four hours of video that show you how to do the exercises that we recommend. And she actually like did the exercises and, and show you how to cook the foods that we recommend in a shopping tour. So sign up for that. And a lot of free resources on NaturalLivingFamily.com, our website as well. So, Wendy, thank you so much for having yes, us. It's been such you. a pleasure. Yes. Love you. Yes, I love you guys too. And thanks for coming on the show and you know enlightening us on so many different aspects of essential oils. And everyone, thanks for tuning in today to the Myers Detox Podcast where you learn everything about alternative health and detoxification protocols and the detox lifestyle. Thanks for tuning in. I'll talk to you next week.